Hello friends, my name is Shada Campbell and I'm an artist and content creator. On my YouTube channel, I release multiple videos a week encouraging the artist in all of us. I think a lot of us have a creative spark, but we don't act on it because we're afraid to be bad at art. So anytime I come online, my goal is always to just dispel that fear. Creativity is play, anyone can do it. With that said, welcome to my four-part watercolor series titled Joyful Watercolor, Finding Your Style. In this series, we're going to dig into watercolor supplies and some techniques. We're gonna paint a whole bunch of stuff and we're going to get you on the fast track to understanding who you are as an artist. This is video one in the four-part series, Watercolor Illustrations. In this video, we'll move from play to practice to a finished piece. We're gonna get really childlike here with our art and I think it's going to tell us a lot about our artistic style. So let's get started. Let's talk supplies. First up, watercolor paints. There are three main types of watercolor paints. Uh, tube paints, they kind of have like a consistency of toothpaste. There are cakes or pans. These are dried paints and they often come with their own little palette. And then there are also liquid paints. Now we'll be using tube paints and pan paints. And I have the Dale or Rowney Aquafine set as well as the Dale or Rowney Aquafine travel set. That's my cakes or pans. And then when you're using tube paints, you'll usually need to grab your own palette palette as well, though it could be anything. A ceramic plate will do. Now here's what my setup today looks like. I have my palette, two glasses of clean water, uh, one for cool colors, one for warm colors, paper towel for blotting my brush. I'm going to get my two paints. We're going to use black to start, or you can use one color, any single color. I have a little Strathmore watercolor sketch pad. So this has 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. Great for taking wet media and I've got a whole bunch of paint brushes. Some of my favorite brushes are the Velvet Touch series um, and these are from Princeton. It's a nice little set. It has a large flat wash brush and those brushes are great for laying down large smooth areas of color or gradients or if you're painting a sky or something like that. It also has a smaller angle shader. That's not one that I use very often and then it has two of my my favorite paint brushes which are the round and the long round so there's a number four round that's a smaller one and the number eight long round which is a little bit larger I do a lot of painting with round brushes and I'll show you why I love them if I wet this brush uh, you can see that it has this nice big belly, this large area here that's going to hold lots and lots of paint, but it comes to a beautifully fine point. So I can do large areas of color, but I can also do very detailed, small, fine, precise work. And I can do all that with one brush in one motion. And that's what we're going to talk about in this course um, as we paint all kinds of different stuff. So let's Let's start our project today. I've got my black watercolor paint here, the tube paint, and I put a little bit of that paint onto my palette. It's the consistency of toothpaste, as I said, but what we need to do is mix in lots of water. We don't want to use our watercolors right out of the tube, they're just too thick, and generally it's not how they're meant to be used. It's important to note that the more water you add to your paints, the lighter the color will become and the more transparent it will be. So for darker, more opaque colors, add less water. Okay, so we've got our dark and our light black paint mixed up. We've got our round paint brushes. I think of a round paint brush almost like a pen. And here's the name of the game for this first video. We're going to doodle. Yes, doodle. Just the way you would if you were back in high school and you were drawing all over your desk. Remember those days? We're going to doodle on a theme. And the theme that I've given myself is kitchen stuff. So anything you would find in your kitchen, you can follow along with me or you can look around you and get inspiration from the very room that you may be sitting in, your kitchen or your dining room. We're going to use our paint brush and watercolor paints almost like a marker or pen and we're just going to doodle and draw and if you're not good quote unquote good at drawing don't worry this is the perfect exercise for you. This is going to help you 
kind of approach art like a kid again, and you'll probably create something really, really, truly interesting. I love looking at different children's books and seeing the different illustrative styles. Some are very realistic, others are cartoon-like, others are down like right ridiculous and that's what makes the illustrations so interesting is that they're all so different so we all have a unique way of presenting the world it has to do partly with our skill but also partly with our world view and the way we enjoy the materials that we're using Later on in this course, in video three, we're going to paint flowers together, and I'm going to show you exactly how to paint some of my favorite flowers. I'm gonna show you step by step, but in this video, that's not what I'm gonna do. I hope you can understand that. We're not actually going to learn to paint a, a sugar jar and an oven mitt, although you're certainly welcome to pause the video and paint along with me. What we're doing here is an exercise in looking around the room and just doodling what we see. I encourage you to pick a totally different room or a different theme. In fact, on the worksheet that comes with this lesson, I've given some prompts for different ideas that you might doodle on. You could doodle spring things or autumn things. You could doodle socks or mittens or your collection of salt and pepper shakers. It's totally up to you. And the thing that we're trying to focus on here is just letting our mind and our brush wander. Then when we've come to the end of the doodle project, we can look at what we've created and kind of note the choices we made, the way we worked with the materials, the if you did it in color, the colors that you chose, and all the choices that we make along the way those are what inform our artistic style. Everybody has a unique style and people say all the time, oh, it just comes with time. You'll find your style eventually. That's true, but that can also be hard to hear when you're starting out and you want to know who you are as an artist and you want to set yourself apart. So one way to kind of get you on the fast track to understanding your style, your voice, is to do a fun exercise like this and don't follow along with me. Doodle the things that you see in your kitchen. It might not be a whisk and a colander. It might be a toaster and a lamp. And then when you're done the doodles, you look and you take stock of the choices you've made, of the lines that you've drawn. And we'll talk about that in a second. So I'm going to continue on here. And as I paint, we'll talk a little bit about some of the choices that I'm making or some of the things that I notice about my own work. First of all, I always find my work a little more cartoony than I, I want it to be. I want my stuff to look cooler, but it always kind of looks, I don't know, a little childish, a little cartoon-like. And that's totally fine. That's just, that's how I draw. I've tried to evolve my style and that totally, you know, is good and works, but I always kind of come back to my baseline, which is a little bit silly and, and I'm not mad about it. <laughs> um, so as I draw scissors and salt and pepper shaker, I'm noticing here that I really like to work with a nice dark, rich black on the end of my brush. And then I like to go in with a, a damp, clean brush and kind of must stuff up. You'll notice at the base of the salt and pepper shakers there, I've just bled the paint out a little bit. I like making things a little messy, a little wonky. So that's something I'm noticing. I like to use writing. I tend to use a little bit of text on my illustrations. That's another thing that I often incorporate. I like high contrast. I like bold, um, dark black and white, but I know when I'm working in color, I prefer more muted tones. So these are all things that I do that inform who I am as an artist. And I think once you finish your work, your doodles, if you do one or two or 10 of these, because um, there are a bunch of prompts on the worksheet, you might want to make some notes, answer some of the questions on the worksheet. What do you notice about your work? Do you do everything very flat and um, straight on? Another thing about my work is that I often use curving lines. I like to include a little bit of perspective, even if it is a bit of a weird or wonky perspective. 
So step one, video one, doodle a whole bunch. Complete your doodle, maybe put a little title at the top, kitchen doodles, my mitten collection, whatever it is. And as you go along or when you're finished, take note of those decisions you made. As I was saying, I've done a lot of curving lines. I like my weird perspective. I like a lot of messy um, bits. That's the joy of watercolor for me is making things a little blurred and watery looking. And there's going to be things that you do naturally. So take note of those. And then there might be other things that you're attempting to do. You're like, I really want to have bold, high contrast here. So I'm going to aim for that. So make notes of that too. That's all stuff you can um, kind of write down on the worksheet and that's going to hopefully be helpful for you. Okay, now we're going to move into step two where we're going to kind of take our doodles to the next level. I'll flip over to a fresh page in my little Strathmore sketchbook and using a pencil we're going to divide our page into four sections. Doesn't have to be perfectly even or anything. And then we're going to work with our pan watercolors. This is the Aquafine set from Dale Rowney. And I really love working with pan watercolors. They're so approachable. They often have the palette built right in. It's easy to mix the colors if you're getting started with watercolors or you're just doing some fun doodles. It's really easy and approachable. I'm mixing up a nice honey brown. I've got a mix of yellow ochre here with a little bit of brown. I'm going to mix red with a bit of violet or mauve and that'll give me a beautiful deep magenta color. Finally, I also picked up a little bit of gray because I think I want to add a bold outline to some of my colorful doodles and that's just another stylistic choice. So now that we're kind of loosened up and doodling like a kid again, our second step here is to kind of refine our doodles and we're going to create colorful doodles. I'm looking at my first page of kitchen doodles and kind of picking uh, ones that I like or that I'd like to work on further, but you can also just paint something totally new. One that I liked from the first page was the little jam jar with the cotton or linen on top. And so that's what I'm painting here. I'm starting with this yellow ochre with a little bit of brown mixed in. One thing I love about watercolor doodles, and it's very different than doodling in pen, is that while the paint is wet on the page, you're sort of working out the shape as you go. So you might start with an outline, but you might also just move this blob around. This red magenta blob can slowly become the form of a jar. You don't always have to start with a, a sharp outline, although you certainly can. And that's what I'm going to do for a little tea kettle. I thought it'd be fun to add a, a little kettle. So I'm just working it out almost as if my brush is a marker and then I'm going to fill it in. Still moving quickly because I don't want the paint to dry completely. When your watercolor dries, um, sometimes harsh lines can form. So if you don't want a line, you want to keep the paint moving and keep the wet area wet until you're, you're ready, until that first layer of your illustration is complete. And now that my jam jar is dry, I am going to grab some of that gray in my small round brush and I'll almost draw a little outline there. So completing my illustration with a, a little bit of an outline, just like the other doodles that we did, the kitchen doodles. I'll also put some low lights. Using a wet on dry technique for the low lights allows me to be very precise. And that's my little jam jar complete. Now, sometimes it is nice to see how someone else does something. So next, let's paint this rolling pin together. I'm going to work out a cylinder shape with a light brown, and I'm just kind of filling it in, running the belly of the brush across the page, maybe leaving a bit of a highlight. Then I grab a little bit of a darker brown on the tip of my brush, and I, I just put some little lines uh, along the top and the bottom. I'll grab an even darker brown. This could be just a darker shade of brown that you mixed, or it could be a more concentrated paint. And we're going to put two little handles there. And again, I'm just kind of working the shape out. I have time while the paint is wet to move the paint around on the paper and see if I like that shape. 
I added a few dark lines there for low lights to give me a little bit of a shading or shadow on the cylinder, on the pin, and we'll leave it alone. It needs to dry a bit now. I'm going to move on to my next and final doodle or illustration, and I think I'll um, do the sugar jar. That's another fun one, and I, I like trying to paint kind of glass because it, it's fun to um, muss up the watercolor paint and, and sort of make it messy, and that's exactly what I'm doing. It's all my clothes classic things that I like. I like doing rounded um, items, things that show a little bit of the perspective. So you could do a sugar jar and it could be very flat, you know, right angles and look very square. Or you could do it with that little bit of round uh, look, a little more realistic. And then I'm mussing up the watercolor paint. I'm making my lines very soft and that gives me a nice look of glass. I'm also going to add a label and that means I can add a bit of text. So these are all things that I like to do. And since this is just a fun sketchbook illustration, a little doodle that's just for me and for practice. I, I want to capture and, and, and do all the things that I enjoy. So that's what we're thinking about here. What did you notice about your first page of doodles? What ones did you like? What subjects were you comfortable with? Now's your chance to explore them and to build on the elements of your art that you're really excited about and that you're noticing maybe for the first time. For me, this is something I talk about on my YouTube channel. I love a sketchy black line. Adding that illustrative black outline or gray as it may be is a great way um, if you're painting and you're a little more comfortable with drawing to add an element to your painting that has that quality of illustration of drawing. You could even add um, your black line in with pen. It doesn't have to be done with a paintbrush. You can do a little mixed media. So those are all the things that are totally up to you and um, that you might be exploring as part of your own style. The final thing I wanna do here is I'm just adding a little bit of white paint. I'm using it concentrated. I'm not going to mix water in, so it's going to be very, very opaque. And I'm just gonna put some little spots on my kettle and then that's it. My uh, Tea time illustration is all done. I'll add a title, although this is just for fun. You totally don't have to do this, but it's kind of a nice way to encapsulate the practice and just make it feel complete and finished, I suppose. That's it for lesson one. Thanks for doodling and getting creative with me. I'll see you next time in video two, where we'll get creative with our watercolor techniques.